politicians are always telling us what we need. They meet here twice a month to discuss Inkster's future. Why don't we invest money in trying to find out what the laws are in? And when you have construction work and stuff of this nature, be sure that you be sure that people of this community get jobs and opportunity. Jails we don't need. Your 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 president candidate, your vice president's running for president, and the Democratic side, most all of your uh, people that's running for public office today is condemning jails. What we need in this community is opportunities for people to get jobs. So we want to spend money for investigating things. Let's spend money trying to figure out a way to get decent jobs in this community for these people. Then you will cut back on crime. This 300, over $300,000 that we have expended to transport our prisoners up north hurt us considerably. I am not proposing a jail facility. I might also, contrary to what one person in this audience today said to me once before, that the only reason Ed Bivens wants to jail is to jail more blacks. That is an outright lie. I want a detention center, and there's a lot of difference between a detention center and a jail, in my opinion. But on the, on the matter of Ed Bivens wanting to jail more blacks, anyone, black or white, if they violate the law, the jail is a spot for them. And we don't have the accommodations at this point to accommodate our own criminals here. Well, uh, yeah, I want to talk about drugs. I want to talk about prison. I want to talk about life, period. Uh, beginning with life, I want to talk about uh, the society that, uh, the way we're living right now. Uh, I've been growing up in a fairly decent home. You know, uh, it's all right. I've been to prison. Prison uh, didn't treat me well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm living halfway comfortable, but still, I'm off into this thing called drugs. I'm off into this society called drugs, which is, uh, you know, a, a hell of a society, you know, but uh, sometimes we get ourselves in this uh, kind of thing. Sometimes society get us off into this thing. You know, I'm not blaming society for, you know, my position, but I'm blaming uh, my, myself and society. Michael Carter. Yeah. The solemnly swear or firm testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth. Yes. Are you able to read, Mr. Carter? Yeah. How far did you go in school? I graduated from high school. Well, I, I started working on Harrison when I was 14 at a place called Oasis Grill. That restaurant has since been demolished. We had quite an array of people coming through the restaurant at that time, and I came to know and to befriend uh, some of the people back then, and my impression at that time was that notwithstanding some of the things that they were doing, that they were friendly people, and they, they protected uh, people who were familiar to them, especially the young girls who worked at the restaurant. If, some, if a customer came, became belligerent or what have you, they would intercede. And they respected us and treated us well. Officer Anderson, does Mr. Carter look familiar to you? No, oh, ma'am. How long have you lived in Inkster, Mr. Carter? Well, about... Richard Pryor, a black comedian, once joked, yeah, when black people go to court to get justice, that's all you see, just us. I see people here from time to time that I used to know from the other side of the bench. Fortunately, most of those are not the ones who are perpetuating the more serious crimes. Uh, and I have found them to be embarrassed to come before me because they know that I know who they are and might have some idea about what they were doing at some point. As a youngster, I dreamt of doing what I'm doing now. If I wanted to go to law school to be a criminal defense lawyer because from the vantage point of working on Harrison, seeing some of the people who went away to prison, I had the perception that these people were victims of society. I no longer have that perception. The judicial system leaves much to be desired in its treatment of minorities. Now, when I first went to prison, about 30 years ago, actually, I was, I was taken advantage of. I was not represented by counsel. I was not advised as my right, I was not advised as the fact that I had a right to a counsel. Just picked up, taken to prison. So, I mean, it's not hard for a black person to wind up in prison. 
What I find hard is that, what I find difficult is, is, is the fact that it's uh, so, so easy. <laughs> it's hard for him not to go. People from the lower social economic backgrounds, they don't have any respect for these people. They just don't do anything. And Rodney King is going to show you that. But one example, a serve for a thousand. We've had Rodney King incidents happen on a daily basis. And not all of them have been done by, by white police officers against black people either. In our communities, they have two, two different perspectives. When they're in a middle class, white community, they're there to protect the citizens. When they're coming to a black community, they're coming to see what they're doing wrong. And you always find what you look for.